Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Vairano racetrack here in Northern Italy. Me personally, this is a moment I've been waiting for for a long time. I've been wearing Alpine Stars gear since before I ever got started in the motorcycle industry. And for the longest time, I could get protection from my toes up to my neck. And the missing piece of the puzzle was always the helmet. A couple of years ago, Alpine Stars debuted their motocross helmet, the SM10. Rave reviews, it's been doing very well. It's a very good helmet. I don't ride motocross, I'm a road guy, I'm a racer, and this has been a long time in development, five years in the waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Supertech R10 Road Racing Helmet, otherwise known as the SR10 Helmet. Like I said before, this has been five years plus in development through the hands of some of the fastest racers in MotoGP, Andrea Dubizioso specifically had a huge role in developing this helmet. And obviously with the safety product, the focus is on protection. And obviously with Alpine Stars, that was a major focus for the group, but it was more than just protection. The five pillars were protection, vision, weight, aerodynamics, and ventilation. That's a lot to ask for a helmet which is why it took so long to develop it. As you can see next to me, you've got Jack Miller's helmet there, Jorge Martin's helmet there, the two current MotoGP riders wearing the helmet. So to start things off, to make weight as little as possible, Alpine Stars is using four shell sizes to cover the, the actual sizing, extra small to double XL. That way you've got a more defined shell shape for each particular head to keep weight down without adding more bulk to the helmet. Uh, as you can see with the shield down, it's a pretty aerodynamic shape and obviously you can see there's a huge spoiler in the back. Does well for racing purposes. If you're a road rider, this pops off and there's a shorter version for road riding as well. When combined with the aero hump on a race suit, this creates super efficient and smooth airflow over the rider and out the back of the bike. Uh, there's a carbon fiber outer shell with Aramid and fiberglass fibers underneath that, all connected through a epoxy resin to keep things stout in shape and operating as they should. The SR10, DOT, ECE, and FIM homologated meets all the proper standards, but beyond that, Alpine Stars did its own testing for impact protection, and both in the linear and the oblique impact tests the SR10 transmitted far less G's to the dummy skull that was inside of it than any of the protection standards actually require. So that's a short way of saying this goes beyond what the standards of protection want. Looking inside the helmet, I know you can't really see it from this angle, but there's the what Alpine Stars calls the A-head system, which allows you to adjust the angle that the helmet sits on your head. And there's a 57 degree uh, eye port opening vertical and a 220 degree angle, I believe, from side to side for optimum vision, both when you're in a tuck and when you're off the bike, going side to side and looking this way. One of the key purposes of that A-head system to adjust the angle of the vision is not everyone is gonna be riding like this. When you're on the street, just cruising around, you'll be more in an upright position. And if the angle of your eye port is too high or too low, that's gonna create a really weird sensation for you. Hence why that A-head system, the patented A-head system, allows you to adjust that field of vision for whatever riding you're doing, whether it's straight up cruising or in a full racer tuck where you're looking up. Beyond just the field of vision, the A-head system allows you to adjust where the helmet fits on your head to allow you to fine tune where that padding rests on your skull and around your cheeks. Different people have different face structures, different compositions, and they like their padding to rest in very specific areas. So to, to fine tune it, you can, get, you can get really granular with this, and that A-head system has 12 points of adjustment. There's four corners that you can, you can manipulate, and within each of those four corners, there's three points of adjustment too. So four times three, that's math, y'all. That's 12 points of adjustment that you can move the helmet around to fit your head the way you want it. 
So the face shield has metal clasps and a metal lock made from aluminum. If you look close, the clasp on the front here actually requires me to push into it to open it up. And part of this has to do with angles of attack during a crash. You know, a rider can fall every which way when they crash, but very rarely is a rider going to fall with their face on the ground sliding this way that would actually trigger this latch to open and open the shield. So that's why this is, this clasp is where it is and is oriented the way it is. Uh, a lot of thought was put into keeping the shield in place in every different situation and angle someone could fall into. So moving on to ventilation and airflow through the helmet, you can already see the aerodynamic design. But starting at the front, you've got the exhaust ports over here. You've got the chin vents that are individually operated on either side. And you can even open them to varying degrees depending on how much air you want in or not in. Underneath the clasp here, this rubber piece comes out to allow you to get even more air into the helmet if you want. If you don't want, that's fine too. Air will then come up through the chin bar and there's ventilation on the top here to allow airflow in here. If you want, very much adjustable to allow very specific amounts of air to come in or not. You can close it up all the way or you can slide, you can slide the vent clasp to pretty much any degree you want to allow very specific and minute amounts of air to come in. You'll hear a lot of times that helmets have ventilation up through the roof, which obviously is important to get airflow up through the dome of the head as well. But the airflow also on the SR10 flows downward into the face area to balance out the air coming in through the chin bar to create a nice neutral pressure point along the face. And then they can escape out the exhaust port on the chin to create a balanced and efficient feel of air going into and out of the helmet. Stability-wise and aero-wise, maybe you notice, maybe you don't, there are stabilizing wings on both sides of the helmet. If you've been following racing these days, wings are all the rage, right? Aerodynamics are where it's at, and that expands to helmets. Maybe this is a feature that we haven't appreciated before, but stability is key if you want to go fast, and if you want to be able to see, right? So a lot of wind tunnel testing has been done with full-size people and figures, not scale models, to flow air through these 3D printed winglets to just add stabilization to the rider's head. These are actually going to be FIM homologated, so you might see these pretty soon on even MotoGP riders' heads. More little details to mention. You might see this cutout here on the bottom of the chin bar. This is to add a little bit of uh, collarbone protection in the event of a crash. So not only does the collarbone cutout protect your collarbone in a fall, decreasing uh, some of the material on the helmet also brings down the weight of the helmet as well. It's a, you know, it's a little thing, but in racing, every little advantage counts. So now we're talking little details like the uh, collarbone cutout, even the winglets here. If you see on the eye port here, there's a pretty distinct cutout right here on the sides here. This is eye port relief so that when you're looking out the side of the helmet as you're turning left or right, basically it creates a wider eye port and then by decreasing the material here, you're dropping a little bit of weight as well. All right, so really, really special guest here, lead developer, super important, vital character in the development of the SR10. Ladies and gentlemen, MotoGP legend, Andrea De Vizioso. Dovi, yeah. nice to see you, nice Thank to you. meet you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, let's just jump into it. What, what was your role in developing this helmet? Well, uh, I'm quite old, so I have a lot of experience uh, <laughs> on a lot of uh, things on, on the street uh, racing. So the helmets, I, I race with uh, a few uh, brands and that's helped me a lot to, to know some details uh, because we start from zero. So 
Uh, at the beginning, I was a bit stressed because uh, to do the right uh, helmet on a street racing, I think is very, 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 very difficult because you have to be okay in a lot of area. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to test before the race. So that's very stressful for me. It yeah. was stressful. Uh, but at the end, I'm so proud because uh, they really did a great job. Um, and um, I explained what uh, it was my experience, what for me was important for my, with the helmet I used in the past. Uh, I was involved in, the, in a bit on the design of the helmet. I want to say a lot because it's so nice. So <laughs> <laughs> take, it, take credit for it, it's nice. And, uh, but there is a lot of things we check together because uh, there is a lot of, a lot of uh, points where you have to be perfect uh, because we are going with a really high speed. So with your experience and the helmets you've worn in the past, is there number one issue you said to the Alpine Stars team? Number one important thing is, what is it? Well, uh, now, now even more than before, the aerodynamic become more important and important. If you see, a lot of brands change completely the shape of the helmets. And Alpinester start uh, right away with the right uh, aerodynamic, in my opinion. And uh, if I can make a comparison with some other brand, straight away it was, it was right. I, I were able to test this helmet on a street bike, but even on a MotoGP bike last year when I retired after the race. Yeah. And that's helped us a lot to see and to check with the right speed uh, the aerodynamics. Is there anything in your testing that you could only experience during a race and not say during yeah. a test session like this? Yes, yes, but uh, if you know what, you can predict a bit mm. even on the test. Mm. So that was uh, really, I mean, helpful for us uh, to, to understand a lot of details. Another thing is the, how big it is, uh, the vision. Yeah. And that is another really good point of these helmets. Uh, when you are in, in the position on, on the bike, because we are so uncomfortable, you have to look yeah, yeah. Uh, up, it's really, really good. Was there something you had to change from, say, the early prototype to now? Was there a major thing that you had to have them change? For well, you? Uh, a lot of things, but that's normal. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, it's impossible to start and be okay, in, because there is a lot of area where you have to be okay. Uh, but that's normal. It takes time because uh, there is a lot of point where you have to do it. Test, change, takes time to uh, weigh the material. Mm. I mean, that's why it takes more than one year, but that's normal. When you're riding, especially at the high, high speeds, can you feel in your neck and your body mm. the, the differences? The aerodynamic effect that yeah. a lot. Yeah. So, um, um, the aerodynamic, when you go over 280, you can feel a lot if the helmet have a good aerodynamic or not. Apart of that, even on the, on the corners, you are out of the bike, and if the shape of the, 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 the helmet is right, you can feel the difference. So that's for sure. You don't feel really this, but if the aerodynamic is not right, it's moving because uh, when mm. the speed going ha ha up, the helmets want to go up. Mm. So mm. there was a lot of work also even on that. Okay, last question. If you had this helmet earlier in your career, would you still be racing and not retired? <laughs> <laughs> yes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Dovi, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. So as far as track impressions go, two things really stand out. One, the stability and the aerodynamics of the helmet, and two, the ventilation, and three, the vision. So not two things, three things. But first and foremost, in my mind, the first impression that came to mind is stability. There's a kilometer long straightaway here, and you know, on a thousand cc motorcycle, you're full pinned in whatever gear, and it's just rock solid on my head. There's no buffeting, no movement at all. Something I can't say the same thing for on some competitors' helmets, but to save face, I won't say which ones. But the SR10 in a straight line at high speeds, it's not just talk. This stays dead stable 
in a tuck, even out of a tuck, I deliberately on some occasions would go full speed, full tilt, and not get in a tuck. And while it was hard on my core and my chest, my head stayed dead as an arrow and it was, it was very, very impressive. And then part of it too was the ability to keep your head steady when you're off the bike because you're off the bike way more. And what I mean by off the bike is you're hanging off the bike from left or right way more than you ever are full tuck. And even then, granted you're going at slower speeds, but there's a really high speed left turn at the end of this kilometer long straightaway. And so you're still hanging off at a pretty good rate of knots. And I could look through the turn, dead stable, see where I needed to go, and there was no problem there. And just the fit of the helmet, the shape of it, obviously it goes well with Alpine Stars leathers. I could turn my head into the corners and not get it hung up on my leathers or hung up on my back, anything like that. So it was, it was as if it wasn't there, which is what you want from a helmet, right? Uh, so that goes into vision. The eye port, nice and big, turning left to right. It doesn't sound like much, but this cutout here really opened up my periphery. I could look out the side of the helmet and really see which way the track went, which way I wanted to go. Uh, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but these little things matter when you're going as fast as you possibly can. Closing, opening vents. Some helmets, I can't tell a difference. With the SR10, it's not just lip service. I could feel the helmet sucking in the air and then feel the channels disperse the air across my sweaty dome here. So, so far so good. It was really impressive. Um, certain bikes I was riding today, when I was in a full tuck, I couldn't see out the eye port. Changed the A-head system a few degrees upwards to get more angle of vision and it helped but still was a little not perfect. What I do a lot of times on my helmets is when I wear them, I physically angle them up anyway so that the eye port is like way up here so that when I'm in this position, it's right where I want it to be. And that worked out well in this particular case too. The stock medium comes with 30 millimeter cheek pads. I switched them out for the 35 millimeter cheek pads just to get some extra thickness on each side. And then when I put the helmet on, it's kind of a struggle to put it on, but once it's there, it's golden, which is what you want. I don't care about how hard it is to put on. Once it's on there, I want it to fit, well, like a glove, or like a helmet, whatever metaphor you want to use. So overall, really impressed with this. All I gotta do now is ride this thing on the roads and see what it's like at more normal speeds. I have no reason to think it's gonna be bad, but uh, you never know until you try it. So. Track compressions, so far, so good. All right, now that you know my track impressions, here is my overall review of the SR10 helmet. Uh, from my street ride as well, I spent the past, what, three days now? Did about, I think we've done 400 kilometers uh, in Italy here, going to the Mugello MotoGP, which is actually where I'm filming this right now. 400 kilometers in all kinds of weather. We've had, obviously, bright sunny days. We've ridden at night. We've ridden at night in the rain. Had to do shield changes, closing, opening vents, all kinds of stuff. Um, side winds, you name it. I feel like this was a pretty thorough street ride to get our impressions of the SR10 helmet. So, what do I think of it? It's largely good in fact I, I shouldn't hesitate like that because it's a it's mainly a good helmet the overriding thing that comes to mind when i think of the super tech r helmet is stability alpine stars really put an emphasis on aerodynamics with the super tech r helmet and like i said in my track portion it holds true on the street ride as well this is a super dead stable helmet. And a lot of that has to do with the details. Obviously the shape of a helmet is gonna be round-ish because we have round heads. But you look at the details and you see, for example, you look at the details and you see these side winglets. I thought they were a gimmick in actual practice my head was dead stable. I can't 
emphasize that enough. We had side winds hitting us on our street ride through the highways here in northern Italy. Side winds barely moved my head. There was barely any side to side turbulence at all. And then it all flows it all flows out the back of the helmet very cleanly. And if you've seen a lot of uh, racing helmets lately, not just from Alpine Stars, but from a lot of manufacturers, there's a more and more emphasis on these longer tail sections. They kind of remind me of like the Porsche 917 race cars. Race car buffs, you're probably gonna kill me for getting this wrong. But the long tail Porsches that destroyed Le Mans back in the day, kind of gives me that same vibe of when you have this greater area for the air to cleanly exit, it leads to a more stable head as you're riding. And obviously you don't want your head shaking around when you're riding the motorcycle, but the benefit that maybe you don't consider is when your head is not shaking around, when the pads are fitting your face tightly but comfortably, your vision isn't rattled either. You can see straight ahead of you without vibrations moving your head around, without the shakiness. And obviously you wanna be able to see to ride your motorcycle. Speaking of vision, wide eye port. I discussed this in the track portion as well, but on the street ride, when you're using your periphery, the sides of the helmet to see if there's a car in the lane next to you that you might be wanna change lanes into. Uh, even just looking through a corner, especially if it's a canyon road and you can't actually see through the corner because there is a mountainside alongside of you. Um, just that, that opening is very nice. The wide field of view obviously is very nice. The strange thing that I experienced with this helmet, and it might just be an anomaly, I don't know, but I was getting this weird reflection. The paint lines on the highway were reflecting off of the inner section of the chin bar in here. And I could see it in the bottom of my periphery and it was oddly distracting. Uh, the weird thing is nobody else noticed that, so maybe it was just me. I would cover my chin with my hand like this as I was riding and it would block off, obviously it would block off all the stuff below and it went away. So something on the ground, I, I assumed it was the paint lines, came up, reflected off the bottom of the chin bar and I could just see it fluttering in my lower vision as I was riding, really weird. The material of the actual pad itself is a very plush, sweat wicking, sweat absorbing uh, material. So it's really nice against your skin. You have the tear off posts. I think Alpine Star says they include like two or three tear offs. The clear shield and the tinted shield, despite being uh, fog proof, basically, they also have pin lock inserts ready to go because people like Pinlock. I like Pinlock as well, but if it doesn't need it, I don't really think I'm gonna use it unless I really think it needs it. But if, if you want it, the Pinlock tabs are already designed into the face shield. As for the face shield itself, riding in the rain at night is the perfect recipe for fogging up your visor. And I deliberately tried to fog it up, you know, ha ha ha. <sighs> breathing out through my mouth, trying to get this thing to fog up, it would not. That's, that's definitely a very, very good sign that uh, in a helmet that I want to see. And, you know, they stress that a bunch, that they did a lot of testing in really bad weather to try and make this thing fog up. And in my little ride with it, I couldn't get it to fog up myself. So overall, really, really like this helmet. Um, others, not so much. If you wear like a Tech Air 5 and you're a taller person, there's other colleagues here with me, kind of taller. They wore airbags, chunkier airbags, or even just chunkier stuff, even if you don't wear an airbag. If you have chunkier stuff underneath your jacket, if you're in a certain sport bike position and your shoulders are forced to scrunch up like this, there have been other colleagues here who have had an issue with the neck roll of the helmet rubbing from side to side and sort of restricting their their movement 
but this is really dependent on your body type. If you're tall, if you have long arms, depending on the, the bike you ride, if you're a sport bike and you're scrunched, uh, this is one of those areas where your mileage will vary depending on who you are, your body type, what you ride, so on and so forth. For me, I didn't have any of that, but I also didn't scrunch my shoulders. I could move freely, even with moving my head, but I'm going straight, straight forward. The side winds for moving my head, I could turn my head easily. It was, it was very fluid through the air. However, that does not mean I don't have some gripes. Other than the reflection of the paint lines through my chin bar, I've got just an issue with the release mechanism of the shield. I get why they did it the way they did it. They wanna make sure the shield doesn't fly off in a crash. I get that. Um, and I don't even mind it being in the front like this. The problem comes for me with my gloved hands. A lot of times with my gloves on, I'll think I'm, I'll reach down here for this plastic insert that covers vents right here. I'll reach here thinking this latch is there when it's really higher. And then I'll go to, eventually I'll figure it out and I'll reach higher, push that, and then open the shield. It could be a little bit less, uh, I wouldn't say difficult, because it's not difficult at all, but it could be just a smidge more intuitive to help guide your finger to locate the opening tab for the helmet. And then comes, not the worst nitpick, but some people are not gonna like this. To replace the shield, it's simple enough. You pull up on the tabs on each side, make sure, and they tell you this, make sure the shield is all the way in the upright position before removing the shield. And the reason for that is this orange tab. I hope you can see that right there. The orange tab right there. You need that when you locate the shield back into place. If your shield isn't all the way up, when you take the shield off, that orange tab will be lower in this rail and it'll be damn near impossible to get this shield back on. You're gonna have to get like a pen or something to jam in there, bring the orange locating pin or locating tab back up into its top position. And then you can pull the metal tab up, locate the shield where it's supposed to be, put it in place and off you go. Not the most user-friendly method of doing things. Not absolutely terrible either. There are other helmets that are more difficult. There's a certain Japanese one I'm sure you're all familiar with that the shields can be kind of cumbersome to put on. This isn't nearly in that realm. But really, that's that's it for me. The, the, it all revolves around the shield. It can be more intuitive to open and easier to change. I imagine once you get used to the operating system here, it won't be a problem. Um, and who knows, maybe they'll modify, revise some things in the future to make it easier to use. This particular one you see here and the ones you maybe see behind me with this really cool carbon uh, fade to red graphic here. These are actually limited edition helmets. There's only gonna be 200 made available, I think at the beginning of 2024. Um, I don't know the cost. They haven't revealed that information at the time of this video being produced. I would estimate somewhere in the $1,000 range. I know, that's a big pill to swallow. The good news is, if you know Alpine Stars and if you know product lines in general, you start with the Halo product and you work your way down. And this is the SR10. I don't see why there wouldn't be an SR7, an SR5, maybe even an SR3 maybe less race oriented, more street, even more urban oriented, definitely a lower price point, which will also entail different materials like no carbon in the shell, maybe all fiberglass, no metal on the hinges or the latch, plastic pieces for that. Who knows, maybe even a different material for the liner, anything to bring the cost, and, bring the cost down. 
Um, but the overall structure, the overall shape, the overall functionality of the SR10, and I imagine the future iterations of the helmet are gonna be pretty much what you see here. Big picture, I'm impressed with the SR10. Uh, but helmets, as you should hopefully know, are very personal things. Yeah, that, that Try them on, see for yourself how they fit, uh, make sure the crown fits great. And if it's loose around your cheeks, you could probably get thicker pads to take up that slack. Um, so yeah, buyer beware, do your due diligence and try on helmets. If the SR10 fits you, it is seriously worth considering. Um, I know I sold said in the beginning, I've been wearing Alpine Star since before I ever got in this industry. Uh, and this is the final piece of the puzzle. And uh, it's good, it's really good. So that's it on the Alpine Stars SR10. Be sure to go to motorcycle.com. I'll have my written review there with more pictures, hopefully some more diagrams, um, and maybe a better explanation of how this all works out. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Ride safe, put a helmet on your head, and uh, like, subscribe, all that nonsense, yada, yada, yada. And as always, we'll see you later.